In this video, we're going to go over the solution that was presented for uh, the problem of the mind swapping machine that in the episode of Futurama that you watched. So here's the setup, just to remind you. There's a mind swapping machine and it can never swap minds in the same pair of bodies twice. The physical brain is explained as being the problem in the episode. So imagine we've shuffled up the minds in a certain number of bodies using the machine according to this rule. And the question that was posed at the very beginning of the episode was, can we get everyone's brains back into their original bodies? And at the end, you found out yes. And it stated that you might need two extra people to do it, so who've never been mind swapped with anyone. So let's rephrase this mathematically. This idea of a mind swapping machine that can never same, or swap the same pair of bodies twice looks like this mathematically. Sn is the set of all permutations of n things. And so we take some ordering of these minds, some permutation of these n minds. And the product of distinct transpositions is the part about never swapping the same pair of bodies twice. You can never do the same swap twice. So they're distinct transposition. Transposition is a swap of just two things. So we saw cycles before that had three, four, five things in the cycle. A transposition would be a cycle with just two things in it. All right, so then the conclusion is that we can always get the minds back into their original bodies, possibly using two extra people. And mathematically, that looks like we have a permutation of n plus two things or objects. And so originally we had n bodies, now we're adding two, s n plus two. And it says if we do pi first, the shuffle first, then we do sigma, remember that the multiplication of permutations is right to left. So the pi from the first line is the shuffling of the minds. The sigma in the second line is the sort of fixing it, fixing the shuffle, bringing it back to ID stands for identity. In permutations, this just means one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three. Everything ends up back where it belongs. So it's saying pi will shuffle it, and sigma will unshuffle it, but sigma might require two extra things, this Sn plus two. All right, so how do we explain where that sigma comes from mathematically? Or in the case of the episode, how do we figure out what swaps to do to get everyone's minds back in their bodies? Well, first thing we do is we do the shuffle. And then what we're going to do to build this solution is we're going to put a little math into it. So we're going to write that shuffling as a permutation in two row notation, just like what we talked about in yesterday's lectures. And the top row is just going to be the list of bodies, and the bottom row is going to be the mind that ends up in that body at the end. So in this episode, there are nine people, n is nine. We're talking about a permutation of nine objects, nine minds, or nine bodies, depending on how you look at it. And so if you look at all the switches that happen, first the professor and Amy switch. I use the first letters of the characters' names. Then Bender and the professor switch. We go right to left when we multiply permutations. Then Amy and Leela switch. Then Fry and Zoidberg switch. Then Bender and Washbucket then Bender and the Emperor, then Hermes and Amy. Those are all the swaps that happen in order in the episode. And if you multiply those out and write it in two row notation, this is what it looks like. So if you don't believe me, pause here and then practice your skills from yesterday where you're multiplying permutations and you'll, you should get this permutation if you write it in two row notation. All right, so here's that same permutation from the previous slide. Let's convert it to cycle notation. We get two cycles. One where there were seven minds and bodies kind of all jumbled up 
And then Fry and Zoidberg only swapped with each other. They weren't involved in any other swaps, so they're kind of their own cycle there at the end. Now we're gonna do that abstraction that we talked about yesterday of using numbers instead. So I'll look at each cycle and number accordingly. So A is gonna be one, W is gonna be two, E is going to be three, the whole way across. Just the order that they're written in cycle notation, that's the number order I'm going to give them. So now our permutation looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is a cycle. Eight and nine is a cycle. And then when I sort of convert everything to numbers and put it in number order in the top row, this is what our two row notation looks like now. So everything's been shuffled up. Now our goal is to put everyone back where they belong. So you have to bring in up to two new minds and bodies. Uh, in the episode, those were the two Harlem Glo Globetrotters. Uh, in the math notation, I'm going to just call them X and Y. We're using numbers for the original people who were shuffled up and X and Y for the two newcomers to help us solve the problem. So once we have a cycle, which we've already converted ours to cycle notation, here's the thing that unshuffles it. This is the sigma that works. Switch x with 1, x being one of your new people, 1 being the first thing in your cycle. Then do y, well technically if you're going to do it in order you would read right to left. So y with the first one, x with the second one, and then you do y with everyone backwards. So with the last person, then the next to the last person, then the next to the next to the last person, down to the third person, the second person. And then don't swap Y with the first person, swap X with the first person. So that's how we do it. Y and one, X and two, and then go backwards through your cycle. Y swaps with everyone in that cycle in backwards order, except for with one, you swap with X because you've already swapped Y with one, so you can't do it again. Our mind swap machine won't let you. But our mind swap machine will let us do all of these because they're all different and they all involve X or Y and X and Y haven't been swapped with anyone yet. So these are all valid according to our mind swap rule if you can't switch the same pair of bodies twice. All right, so when you actually write down this multiplication, the shuffle, which is the cycle, and then the sigma from the last slide, which is supposed to fix it, you see that it is fixed. One, mine number one is in body number one. Mine number two is in body number two. Mine number three is in body number three. All the way up to X and Y will be switched, our two new people. Their minds might be switched. Well, if that happens at the end, we can just swap X and Y, and then they'll be back where they belong. And we haven't done this swap yet, so um, there's no problem there with our machine's rules. So how would this work, or how did it work in the episode? We had Amy, Wash, Bucket, Emperor, Bender, Professor, Leela, and Hermes all mixed up in this way. So if we take globetrotter y and swap with amy globetrotter x and s swap with wash bucket and then globetrotter y with hermes leela professor bender emperor wash bucket all the way down and then finally globetrotter x with amy that would put all seven of these characters back in their right original bodies but the globetrotters will be swapped but we're gonna fix Fry and Zoidberg too, so that actually ends up fixing the globetrotter swapping problem as well. We have another cycle to consider, the 8-9 cycle, or the Zoidberg-Fry cycle. If you swap globetrotter Y with Zoidberg, globetrotter X with Fry, globetrotter Y with Fry, and then globetrotter X with Zoidberg, everyone is back where they belong. So, our pie parts in the previous couple of slides were the mixing up. Then the sigmas put everyone back except for possibly the globetrotters. But because we did it twice, the globetrotters were swapped and then they weren't. So everyone actually ends up 
exactly where they belong, and we only used two extra people to get it done. So that's sort of the whole idea of the episode. This is the only known mathematical theorem that was invented purely for entertainment purposes, purely for a television show purpose. Um, one of the writers on the show has a PhD in applied mathematics, and so he came up with this whole idea and put it forth, and they wrote the episode around this mathematical idea, um, but putting it in a context that isn't pure uh, symbols, which can be a little scary. So this slide here, the mathematical statement, suppose pi and Sn could be written as a product of distinct transpositions, then there exists sigma in Sn plus 2 such that sigma times pi is the identity. If I had tried to explain that to you a week ago, you might not have had any idea what any of these words meant, and you wouldn't have necessarily cared. Why do we care that we can create this sigma? So they built this story of the mind-swapping machine around this mathematical idea to show um, one science fiction-y way in which you might care.